well as Tata LXC. In fact, we also have Rakshit Ranjan joining us. He's portfolio manager at Marcellus Investment Managers. Rakshit, thanks a lot for being with us today. And uh, I don't know if you were listening into what Reema was just going through, you know, about Tata LXC in particular. So I want to start by asking you about mid-cap IT. What do you think about this space? Because valuations for a lot of these companies are already very stretched, right? With around a 22% kind of rally this year for Tata LXC in particular. The question is, how much more of an upside is there really? And within the IT space, would you play this pack at all? Well, yes. Uh, <clears throat> so good morning. Thanks for having me on your channel, first of all. Um, in terms of uh, the tailwinds to the sector, there are some very structural tailwinds as, uh, uh, you know, the tech ad adoption, it evolves. Uh, applications moving to, to cloud, data moving to data lakes, AI, uh, computation power coming in uh, over the next 10, 15, 20 years, you'll see a lot of uh, need for application of tech services uh, all over the world with uh, with large corporates. Um, uh, it directly becomes a tailwind for Indian IT services, particularly because um, the, there's massive consolidation uh, from the clients in terms of demand for IT services where they don't want to deal with five or seven different IT vendors, they want to deal with one or two. And hence, uh, vendors with large-scale talent manpower uh, will benefit, which is where the Indian IT services providers, they benefit on uh, above, above, say, a Cognizant or an Accenture, et cetera. But having said that, um, across the Indian IT services players, I, I don't think the tailwind will be equally available to all the companies. You can already see in the large, uh, larger ones, the likes of TCS are far superior uh, to the others. Likewise, in the mid-cap one, uh, the space you were talking about, I think uh, LTTS, uh, Tata LXC, these are some of the stocks which are in our portfolios, our clients' portfolios, our families' portfolios, and um, and we, we believe these will be the winners compared to the broader, uh, broader industry in the long run. Uh, Rakshit, uh, any changes in your portfolio in the last one month? Um, not really. I mean, positions we try to keep uh, uh, benefiting from any dislocations in the share prices, but uh, list of stocks, we haven't uh, made many changes. No, fair enough. What anything. we wanted to know is that if you book profits, uh, just brought down your weightage, your exposure, added on some more stocks in your list, the existing list. Yes. So, uh, particularly in the last six, seven months, uh, uh, for instance, in our portfolio, we've uh, we've gone, uh, we've increased our weight in uh, a stock like DV's Labs, uh, which is in our portfolio. Again, in our family, friends, his portfolios as well. Uh, and in order to uh, uh, put more weight into that, uh, we've sort of uh, trimmed a little bit from uh, uh, some of the consumer company names, which had done which had done well prior to that. So, yeah, those are the changes. Net net, this is rebalancing activity, which sort of adds uh, 200 basis points plus uh, to long term portfolio performance for us. Mm, OK, so you've added some weight in uh, in DVs. That's uh, interesting. Uh, any other change apart from that, Rakshit? Not really, not in the in the uh, recent past. OK, not in the recent past. Let me ask you about uh, the way you are looking at financials. Uh, of course, nothing changes immediately, but I'm just trying to get your sense because it's very early days. HDFC Bank's numbers have been largely well received by the market. And it seems the market is getting a little more excited uh, about uh, more private sector names as well. Uh, going ahead, what are you eyeing within the financial space? Any Anything new that maybe you're studying, some ideas that you're uh, you know tinkering with? No, I think the, the many many businesses here are undergoing transitions. Uh, uh, so, for instance, Bajaj Finance, one of our larger portfolio companies, is undergoing a massive transition towards using uh, tech AI in a different way than they used to previously, uh, becoming a fintech player, driving fee income growth uh, at a far higher rate than they used to previously, so on and so forth. Uh, so that's uh, that's a firm under transition. HDFC Bank, we expect to transition really well after the merger. Uh, there will be massive free up of resources because of the reduction in the in the uh, uh, length of uh, the term, uh, uh, the tenure of the loan book. Uh, where prior to the HDFC Limited merger, uh, HDFC Bank didn't have uh, too many home loans in the home uh, in the loan book which led to the tenure of the book being very short, runoffs were very frequent. As a result, it's it's like driving a car at 60 kilometers per hour in third gear. But once you get the uh, home loan book, uh, many centralized resources, they get freed up because disbursements don't have to be as fast to grow the loan book at the same rate. 
because the tenure has become longer. So those mm. are uh, some of the massive sure. low, uh, low hanging fruits uh, we are looking okay. out for. You know, Rakshat, I'm glad you brought up Bajaj Finance because you have been, uh, you know, you folks have been in long-term uh, bulls on Bajaj Finance. You've held that uh, for a long time as well. You know, uh, we are running into the geo-financial demerger and I, I have to ask you the most obvious question in the room, right? Everyone's wondering how disruptive geo-financial is going to be and whether going forward, I mean, incrementally from here, uh, whether they're going to give Bajaj Finance a tough fight. So maybe there's going to be this battle for market share. How are you looking at this, considering Bajaj Finance is a big holding for you? Yes, no, um, look, any um, any industry will see increased competitive intensity, uh, especially towards business models which make high ROEs and ROCEs. And that's a common phenomenon across all of our portfolio companies, whether, the, whether it be in paints or lending or adhesives or... Uh, pharma, etc. You see a lot of in increasing competition. G uh, Geo finance will be very similar. Um, what needs to be seen is whether uh, it's the is the large balance sheet only as a great proposition as, as a proposition for geo finance. If that is the case, then I think uh, uh, there has been competitive intensity rising in the past in this sector with only balance sheet being uh, being put as a weight. Uh, it, that is not sustainable uh, beyond a couple of years in terms of uh, being able to dislodge incumbent dominance. Um, but if they if they really pull off underwriting quality uh, geofinance, then I'm sure they will be a very credible competitor for which any shareholder of a Bajaj Finance or uh, or even I would say some of the larger banks might want to be on the on the lookout. Uh, but uh, at the moment, uh, given the amount of capital that geofinance is committing to this. Uh, which is, I think, less than five percent of the um, of the industry's capital being put here. Um, and given that uh, Bajaj Finance yeah. is not a 20, 30 percent market share, it's a relatively smaller market share. I think uh, it's not a it's not a, a, a one is to one fight necessarily, provided Bajaj keeps doing what it knows best. Um, so at the moment, we are uh, we are uh, uh, sticking to our conviction levels on Bajaj Finance there. All right, Rakshit, it's uh, always wonderful to have you on the show. So thank you for taking out the time and speaking to us today. By the way, the market has seen a sudden...